Praise God! If you'd like to ask questions when studying the Bible, the next Bible study step is for you. Welcome to Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. We're walking through the steps of Bible study. The first step was observation. The second step is all about asking questions, interpretation. Now, interpretation has gotten a bad rap oftentimes in Bible studies and small groups and Sunday school settings because you get the idea that, well, that's just your interpretation. If, I, if my opinion is wedded to the text, then somehow that's my own interpretation. This Bible study step of interpretation is not our personal opinion that we read back into the text. In fact, when we read the Bible, we don't ever want to read our own ideas and presuppositions in the text. That has a real technical term that uh, we use when we teach the college course how to study the Bible called Jesus. We're reading things into the text, and that's not good at all. But in interpretation, we're simply asking questions about the book. Who? What? When? Where? How? Each one of these questions helps us to think through what is actually taking place in the passage. For example, who wrote the book? When did the author write the book? Well, I thought God wrote the Bible. He did. In fact, in 2 Peter, Peter tells us that holy men of God were moved upon by the Holy Spirit as they wrote the sacred words of Scripture. We're not suggesting in any way that the Bible isn't God's Word just because we talk about that human author. Rather, Inspiration is a divine cooperation between the Holy Spirit and the human writer. And so one of the questions I want to ask is, who wrote this book? Now, sometimes that's easy, as in the epistles of Paul, where he starts off by saying, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. But in Genesis, we think, well, it's the first five books of Moses, and so Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy Oh my goodness, those were written by Moses. Okay, that's fair to presume because that's what the tradition of the Jewish tradition tells us even prior to the time of Jesus. Now, of course, when you're in Deuteronomy and you learn about the death of Moses, well, obviously Moses didn't write that part. Okay, but who wrote the book? That's a fair question. When did he write the book? Remember, we have 4,000 years of time in the Old Testament and 90 years for the New Testament. So the when discussion, the timeline, really becomes an important discussion. So here I am at this text, and I've identified everything that I've observed. Now I ask who wrote it? When did he write it? Why did he write it? We're looking for the author's purpose, and we're looking for it in the text first. We're asking all these questions. Now, sometimes the question not, might not be readily available, but if it is, we've solved part of our Bible interpretation challenge. And so, for example, we're going to look at Philippians 4, verses 2 and 3, and we're going to notice something when we ask a question about the text. I plead with you, Odia, and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. So let's say we're in the book of, we, since we're in the book of Philippians, we ask, who wrote this book? Well, it's one of those epistles of Paul, so we know that Paul is writing it. When did he write it? Well, it doesn't, this little part of this passage doesn't tell us when he wrote it. We might uh, look that up in the introductory section of the book, perhaps, or we might notice it as we've been reading the book of Acts prior, and prior to when the church at Philippi was started. But why is the reason that he's writing 
In this passage, it's very apparent. We have Euodia and we have Syntyche, and they're being told to be of the same mind. If he's telling them to be of the same mind, probably they weren't of the same mind. Were these troublemakers? No, they weren't troublemakers because it says, help these women since they've contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. These are hardworking Christian women, and yet there's something going on there. So to answer part of the question why, we let the text tell us first. Just like we did with observation, the text itself has priority. And if the text can give us the answer, we don't have to look at any introductory information or read a commentary. We get the answer straight from the text. And so it goes on to say, along with Clement and the rest of my coworkers. So everybody that's been working with Paul have been working really hard and all of their names are in the book of life, just as it says in Philippians 2, verse 3. So when you're doing the task of interpretation, you start by asking questions. Who? When? What? How? Why? All questions for interpretation, the second step of Bible study. Thanks for watching Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to be reminded of new content. Praise God!